dare I say that we're going to talk about body movement right now? Well, I hope you're going to be pleasantly surprised. If you're like most people, you're probably holding your breath right now thinking, this is all I need, one more person telling me I should be exercising. Well, listen on, and hopefully you're going to like what you hear. We all have different sensibilities when it comes to exercise. Some of us are born and raised with lots of body movement and we wouldn't feel normal if we weren't moving our bodies and pushing them regularly. Both my son and his dad are like that. I, however, was born into a very sedentary family and moving my body has always been an effort. The good news is that I've learned a lot and I've studied a lot about it and I can relate to people who don't even want to talk about it. Okay, here are some facts about body movement. First, a body that is in motion tends to stay in motion. Did I write that? No, it was written by Sir Isaac Newton in 1687. It's the first law of motion. Let me repeat that. A body in motion tends to stay in motion. I think this is one of the most important things that was ever said about human health. And Sir Isaac Newton wasn't even talking specifically about the human body. And you know what he also said? He also said, a body at rest tends to stay at rest. And this is also true. You can see this if you look around at all the people you know. Bodies that have always been more active, they tend to stay more active. They do a lot of fun things. Bodies that are sedentary, they tend to stay more sedentary and they get stiffer and even less active over time until they wouldn't even be able to do things if they needed to. For example, I know a lot of 60 year olds who say they'd never be able to get up off the floor if they needed to. For some people, it's due to disability over which they have no control. But for others, it's due to many, many, many years of just not moving. Go to your downtown area and just observe people for a little bit. Which bodies are used to being in motion and which bodies haven't been in motion for a long time? We have a few people in my town who I see out and about a lot. They're in their 80s and 90s. And they stand tall and walk strong and they really stand out because most people in their 80s and 90s are not getting around so well and many are living their lives requiring the assistance of others to even get down the hall or to go to the bathroom. Of course, exercise is not the only difference in these people. There are genetics and of course lots of life happens beyond our control. However, it's clear that these active elders have consciously taken their fortunate gift of health and then they chose to help it further by being a body that stays in motion. The second point I wanna make is that body movement or exercise is the number one thing a person can do to help just about any system in their body. I remember going to a functional medicine conference a few years ago. The moderator asked every single specialist independently at the end of their talk, what would be the one thing that they would recommend for their patients to help themselves with their bodies from the perspective of their particular medical specialty, whatever that was. They asked neurologists, cardiologists, pulmonologists, immunologists, rheumatologists, psychiatrists, endocrinologists, you name it. And every single one of them had the same answer. Regular exercise is the number one thing a person can do to maintain or improve their health and longevity. And here's why. Body movement gets everything moving. When muscles and other tissues move, they help your lymphatic flow to move, which does the deep cleaning and helps to get the junk out. Exercise helps your whole metabolic system to normalize blood sugar, improve metabolic rate, increase muscle, decrease fat tissue, and normalize weight. It helps your whole endocrine system to balance hormones and also better deal with the effects of stress on the body. It helps your brain chemicals and your mood chemicals. It helps with cognitive function. It helps strengthen your heart and your lungs. 
It helps to improve the function of your immune system. It helps your gut to move more regularly. It helps with sleep. Do I need to say more? So here's my take on body movement. Yes, there are better and not as good ways to move your body. But the bottom line is make it a habit to move your body somehow. The other thing I've observed in the 30 years I've been helping people to get their bodies moving and also observing it in myself is if it isn't fun, chances are we aren't going to do it. There are hundreds of ways to move our bodies. But the reality is that no matter what kind of exercise you choose, if you don't like it, chances are you're not going to do it. If you're not currently moving your body, I'd recommend that you just start moving it. Baby steps. Make a list of four different things that you'd be willing to do on a daily basis. I say four so that if you choose one each day, you won't get bored. Make it small and make it fun. Choose one every day, five days a week. Like dancing around the house or walking around the block or stretching or yoga on a mat or even hitting a class downtown or online. It doesn't need to be a lot or for a long time when you start. Think about what might make it more fun, like listening to music or to that podcast you've been wanting to hear. Know that there are thousands of options online from yoga classes to Zumba or other dance programs to Tai Chi to seated exercise or strengthening exercises. Start with only 10 minutes a day. That's not much and build up to at least 30 minutes a day. To step it up, there are programs online for high intensity interval training and body sculpting and back pain relief and higher intensity dancing and other workouts. There are also lots of in-person options from going to the gym to learning pickleball or taking a dance yoga or Pilates class. It's likely that no matter what you do, there's going to be a two to three week period during which you may be a little sore, you might need to talk yourself into it, you may need to find the time for it and stick to it. After that, it kind of becomes something you want to do because it really starts to feed you. Most people see exercise as a way to stay strong, manage weight, and optimize cardiovascular health. For cardiovascular health, studies show that even just walking 30 minutes five times per week reduces your risk for heart disease by a whopping 30%. Regarding weight management, it's now clear that hours on end of aerobic exercise is just not optimal. The days of recommending two hour aerobic workouts in the gym six days a week are gone. Aerobic exercise is pretty slow at burning calories and it takes a lot of time and repetitively uses the same muscles and tendons and ligaments over and over again. Also, it can cause stress on the body which actually can cause cortisol surges, which can actually increase blood sugar and contribute to weight gain. Researchers have learned that the best way to burn fat and calories is to make more muscle. One pound of muscle burns between seven to 13 calories per day just at rest and more with exercise. On the other hand, one pound of fat burns two to three calories per day. It might not sound like a lot, but that all adds up. So if you create more muscle in your body, you're going to be naturally burning more calories all day long, and your workouts will also be that much more effective. And the great side effect is that you even get stronger. Now, I'm not talking about becoming a weightlifter. You, you can if you want to. I'm talking about small gains in muscle, toning muscle, by pushing them just a little harder with each exercise session. For people who are looking for the most efficient ways to get the best bang for the time spent with their exercise, so to speak, most exercise experts recommend something called high intensity interval training, or HIIT. HIIT involves short bursts of high intensity exercise followed by a longer period of low intensity exercise. There are different ways to do this. 
One is to do one minute high intensity followed by two minutes of low intensity and it's repeated six to 10 times. Another is to do 30 seconds followed by two minutes of low intensity or two minutes followed by three minutes of low intensity. If you're a beginner, I'd start slow. I'd also recommend that you check with your medical provider to make sure that your heart and your body are up for the high intensity work. There are lots of HIIT workouts available online, many, many good ones for free. Make sure that you're matching your exercise levels that are right for your age and your abilities. Some people don't want to do the high intensity stuff. There are other ways of gently moving and challenging your body so that you can get similar benefit. So check out our written resources to get an idea of where you should aim to be with your body movement. But here's the bottom line. I can't say it enough. Something is so much better than nothing. And being happy is better than everything. So whether it's just a little, whether it feels like work or play, find ways to move your body at least five times each week. Make it a priority. Make an appointment with yourself if you have to. I tell people, if you make an appointment for lunch with your friend, or you make an appointment to go see your doctor, or you make a commitment to, to a college class, you're generally not going to miss it because you've made that commitment to somebody else. Well, think about exercise that way. Make your commitment to yourself like it's an appointment with somebody else. You can't miss it. Put it on your calendar. Put it into your phone. So many of us are willing to run to the doctor all the time to, to get fixed, but we ignore the number one thing we can do to fix ourselves. In the written materials, I've provided a good, solid exercise guide. I'm sure that you're going to find something in it that's going to work for you. There's body movement for every kind of body. If your body is disabled or other abled in some way, there's almost always a way to get your body moving to match your abilities and give you a little challenge. If you get a lot of pain with any kind of exercise or you have poor recovery, there are ways to start with baby, baby steps to help you ever so slowly start getting some movement. Physical therapists and trainers are great at meeting each person where they are at and helping their bodies to get moving. So remember, stay safe, don't take on more than you can handle, start low, go slow, get clearance from your medical provider, and please, please, please choose to be a body that stays in motion. We'll see you soon.